Portraits used to show someone at work and meant to be published in newspapers, magazines, annual reports, or on the web are called editorial portraits. Editorial portraiture can be much looser since it's important to show the atmosphere of the job or job site along with the subject. Most editorial portraits show exaggerated details, although all are true to the job. Let's assume we've been hired to produce a shot of a lab technician in a medical drug production facility, and we need to shoot it in the studio. Piece of cake. My key light will be a larger reflector, a 20-inch beauty bowl with a 25 degree grid spot to throw a spot of light that falls off to shadow reasonably fast. You could also use a smaller parabolic reflector, but it will throw a harder shadow. I'll set it close to my subject to get the full benefit of the quick fall off and to keep the light mostly on her. The white seamless background has been lit from above and behind where my flask will be with a three foot by four foot softbox which will illuminate the background evenly yet fall off gradually. To determine where I should place my light meter, I'll draw a bead on the flask from camera and walk back and meter my background at that point. At this point, I will power the output of my light to equal the output of my key. I want to be certain to get light through the chemistry in the flask. I've seen a million stock photos of chemists. Most of them show liquids that are fluorescent red or green, and that's usually not true in real life. If you are staging an image like this, and color is an option, use something easy like coffee, wine, or a soft drink. Then dilute it with water or a couple drops of milk, test it, then shoot. It'll be a lot more believable. I've also added a one foot by six foot strip softbox as a hair light right over and behind the back of my model. This will add contouring to her shoulders as well as her hair. Now when my model raises her flask with the appropriate expression, the shot is terrific. I think we should spice it up a little bit more. Let's add a gel to that hair light. I've wrapped it with a full CTO or color to orange gelatin filter. The gel converts the color temperature of daylight to a close approximation of tungsten light, about 3200 degrees Kelvin, and will rim my chemist with a warm orange light. To be certain the light will not spill over the top of her head and onto her nose, I'll turn off the modeling light on the key and check its position. With my gel in place, I've set the power of the hair light to one-third stop less than the key in order to get a deep, rich color across my subject's shoulders. My final setup is a perfect editorial photo and a terrific stock photo too.